Our media on the call, we're joined now by uh, Coach Helton. Coach, would you mind giving us an opening statement and then we'll open up for questions. Yeah, hello guys, good to see everybody. Um, exciting time here in Statesboro, having the opportunity to uh, be right in the middle of spring football uh, to put together not only a staff, but a group of players uh, that are excited about the future. Uh, we're in practice 11 right now. Wish we had 1,100 more, to be honest with you, when you're putting in three new phases of, of the game, offensively, defensively, and special teams-wise. But uh, we are uh, really excited about the opportunity that lies ahead. Um, we've got a spring game coming up on April 23rd. Uh, and then uh, look forward to a great fall camp and a, a great 22 season. So with that, uh, I look forward to taking any questions that you have. For our media that may have just joined us, a uh, reminder to remain on mute, type your questions into the chat, and I'll read those aloud for Coach. Uh, Coach, first question here, how do you feel about the transfer portal and how it can impact college football programs? Do you see it as a positive, negative, or something in between? And have your feelings on that evolved over time? I think everybody's going to use it differently based on their own personal situation. Um, you know, what we are here at Georgia Southern, uh, I believe we're a developmental team. Um, we're going to focus heavily on taking young men out of the state of Georgia and the attached states within our area, uh, but be able to use the portal for immediate needs. So what do I mean uh, by that? Uh, I'll give you a great example. So um, C.J. Wright, who is an NFL prospect uh, at defensive tackle, um, uh, leaves for the NFL early. Uh, and so we needed a, a mature, older player to be able to immediately fit that need uh, while some younger players grew up. We were very fortunate. We got Christian Christian Varner uh, from the University of North Carolina, who's originally from Iron terrific fit, you know, for us, uh, not only from him being from the state of Georgia and knowing this university, but meets a positional need. Um, you look at uh, instituting a new uh, offensive system. Uh, that's going to push the ball down the field more vertically uh, than has been done in the past year. So we felt like we needed to help the quarterback room. Uh, and we went out and got Kyle Van Treese from Buffalo. You know, being my time at USC, uh, I, I saw a, a former teammate of mine in, in Les Snead, who's the GM at, at the, man, uh, GM at the Rams. Uh, and the moves that he's made uh, over the past uh, couple of years. I remember when the Rams um, uh, first came to Los Angeles and they went immediately to the playoffs and everybody was excited. Uh, and then all of a sudden he made some immediate changes. Um, and if you remember, he acquired Adama Kinsu, uh, Marcus Peters and Tlaib that year. And all of a sudden they're a Super Bowl team. I mean, how many GMs uh, trade a first round draft pick quarterback and, and go get Matthew Stafford, you know, to pr produce a Super Bowl win. So I think for us, it's going to be about the immediate need. We signed 26 kids this last signing class and 22 of them are freshmen and four of them were portal kids. And I see that's what we're going to be. Coach, you're new to the Sun Belt, but uh, obviously we've got three new members coming in on the East Division side, one being a former uh, Southern Conference rival in Marshall. Mm -hmm. um, any, what's the excitement around Statesboro um, about those additions on the East Division? Yeah, it's, it's one of the reasons I was so intrigued and so excited about the job. I, you know, you were seeing other conferences across the country breaking up and splitting up. And here's a Sun Belt, which uh, I think is going to be the premier, you know, group of five conference when everything's said and done. I can't, uh, I can't commend uh, Commissioner Gill and our presidents enough for the strength uh, that they have shown, um, whether it was through COVID, whether it was through realignment of conferences, while other conferences were breaking apart we're actually capturing really quality schools and Marshall is one of those uh, that, that uh, as you said, comes to mind. So it's an exciting time for the conference. Uh, you look at the, the quality of players in this conference, you look at the quality of coaches, uh, the, com the competitive level of the teams, you know, in, in recent, you know, in recent memory, you have teams like Louisiana Lafayette, Coastal Carolina, uh, App State, and you look at Georgia Southern, you, you have really strong teams. Uh, within this conference that have been at a top 25 level, you know, so um, it, it's something that it's exciting to have the opportunity to join this conference as a head coach. Uh, and you can see how bright the future is uh, and because of its leadership from whether it's the commissioners, uh, commissioner or the presidents. And uh, so uh, I see this conference growing stronger by the day. Coach, what made Ryan Apple and someone you wanted to recruit and have on your coaching staff? 
I, I've known Ryan uh, for a while. I, I if you recall, I, I spent six weeks at Arkansas State prior to going to USC, and Ryan Applin was the quarterback at that time. So I knew Ryan when he was a player. I've also known Ryan because he's worked for my brother uh, at, at Western Kentucky. I have always followed his career, uh, an, an elite recruiter uh, that develops really special relationships and a brilliant young coach. Uh, it, it, this is a guy that's got coordinator capabilities uh, in the future. Uh, I think that he is uh, uh, the, the best part of his coaching career is ahead of him, has tremendous upside. And when you look at a guy that can just build relationships at every level, whether it's current kids on your team, whether it's the relationships that he makes in recruiting and, and just his level of knowledge of the game, um, there's a reason that he that he's one of the better players in the history of this league. You know, he, he, being a quarterback and and doing what he's done at Arkansas State, uh, we feel like we've won the lottery, uh, bringing him from from Jonesboro to Statesboro. Coach, you already mentioned uh, some NFL prospects. Uh, another one that comes to mind is defensive back Daryl Baker Jr. Um, why you didn't coach him on the field, being around the program for part of the season last year. Um, what do you think and makes him such a special player and someone deserving of a shot at the next level? Yeah, you know, I, I got the opportunity to, to join this team on November 2nd and watch those last three games and, and watch Daryl really work and then being able to see his pro day. The first thing that jumps out to you is this, his explosiveness. I mean, here's a, here's a six foot one plus body, 200 pound body that, you know, is running four four that's jump broad jumping over 11 feet. I watched him dang high, uh, you know, high jump dang 43 inches. Uh, it, you know, he's just a extremely explosive explosive athlete that I don't think's re reached the best part of his game yet. I, I truly believe two, three, four years down the road, you're going to look up and go, gosh, everybody, where did this guy come from uh, in the NFL? Uh, and he has that length and explosiveness that the league wants, uh, that the league is, is will invest in. And just his sheer, you know, skill set is something that um, whoever gets him uh, is going to be very fortunate. Plus, I love his pro mindset. I mean, he, he was a guy that showed up to work every day, first one in, last one out, tremendous work ethic, uh, just represents the organization, unreal. He, he's a pro's pro. Um, and so I look for uh, really good things for him and wish him nothing but the best. He's, he's going to represent Georgia Southern really well in the league. One last one here for you, Coach. How has name, image, and likeness and those opportunities for college athletes impacted the football program, and how does it impact recruiting as well? Yeah, you, you know, you look over, you look over really the last decade, and I've been doing it 27 years, and, and in the last decade, I think the NCAA has done a really ni a nice job of really doing the things for the student athlete that help them, um, whether, you know, it's the one-time transfer portal, uh, whether it's the ability to garner an extra year because of COVID, um, and here comes name, image, and likeness, um, and so I, I think that each each young man uh, having that opportunity is a special thing. It's a good thing. Um, the one thing that I always try to tell kids, though, is remember to, you know, uh, live in the moment and, and live at being great at your job. Um, the, when you look for a big picture uh, success, success that lasts decades, uh, it's about the quality of degree that you get. It's about how well you're playing on the field. Um, you know, it's nice to get. Uh, it's nice to get those deals uh, that last for a short time, uh, but think about the deal that lasts for the rest of your lifetime, and, and that's the ability to get your degree. That's the ability to progress as a football player, um, and that's the ability to reach the next level. And to do that, that is a full-time job. I mean, it's every second of the day. Uh, so uh, don't worry yourself as much about the those deals uh, right now when so many more are going to come after, you know, you leave college uh, and focus on how you can look at big picture items. But it, it's something that um, each school uh, is, is um, I think we're all excited about for, for the kids uh, to be able to get um, the assets that they can acquire uh, because of what they've done as a student athlete. So it is an exciting time in college football because of it. Uh, and it's something that I think really benefits our kids. Thanks, Coach Allen, for your time this morning. Really appreciate it. All righty, guys. Take care. Hail Southern.